I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Frank Barrier, Here. Dave Campbell, Here. Jim Donnelly, Here. Larry Sear, Here. Mark Sievers, Noel Wilson, Here. Tina Shade. Here. Okay, uh, we'll get started. The first thing we have on our agenda is Mayor Bargo uh, with a proclamation presentation. Thank you. to introduce uh, some of my new friends. Uh, it's uh, Ken and, and Jana Mouse, and this is Marcus. Marcus comes to visit me uh, in my office when his dad comes in to pay the garbage bill, because he knows I have chocolate in there. <laughs> so, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Marcus. Is that okay? I got a letter from uh, Jana last month that there is a... Uh, an awareness uh, date that was made last month on May the 11th, which was before our council meeting, so we weren't able to do it last month. So I said, well, why don't you bring him in and we'll have his own awareness day. So that's what we're gonna do to this evening. Uh, Marcus has a, a disease, that's what it's called. Pernodiolite syndrome. And uh, he is actually five years old. He yeah, just turned five. Mark's just turned five. And he is one awesome kid, like I have to say. <laughs> but uh, I told her, I said that uh, I didn't know a whole lot about the disease, but I certainly was able to, to read a lot about it. And there was an article put in the Sentinel uh, last month, you know, last month. Uh, about it, so I was able to research there, plus on the internet, I went in and checked on it. And I had a proclamation that I'd like to read, and we'll end up from the information side. It says, Whereas Marcus Mounts, who was born at 37 weeks, weighing only 2 pounds, 2 ounces, and 14 inches long, continues to be a sweet and lovely little boy, even though he battles daily the effects of this disease. Whereas what also makes him so unique is the fact that he is one of two children in central Pennsylvania with the disease. Whereas CDLS is a condition that can be diagnosed at any age. And with Marcus, Dr. Ian France, a genetic specialist at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia, determined two years ago that his medical complications were stemming from this condition. Whereas dedicated professionals are presently involved in valuable research to explore new remedies and diagnostic tools to offer hope for children with this disease and to also raise awareness. Therefore, I, I'm oh, sorry, I'm a little emotional. <laughs> yeah. so <we'll> repeat the rest. <laughs> Therefore, I, Deborah Bargo, Mayor of the Borough of Lewistown, on behalf of the Lewistown Borough Council and staff hereby proclaim today, June 10, 2019, as Marcus Mount's Day, to honor him and pray for him as he smiles says that he will defeat the odds. Signed, Deborah Bargo. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you to sign? To read it, I'm sorry. They've given me a little picture of him, and I had a had it in Mars. You can hang that on your wall. Who's that? Huh? And I happened to be <laughs> at a conference at Hershey. Uh, I just came up today. And uh, I know how he likes chocolate. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> can you say thank you? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> 
PFM. We were here about a month ago to talk about the yellow handout. <coughs> With me, Jens Zongard from Eckerd Siemens uh, Bond Council and Mark Quinn from Stiefel, your, your bond underwriter. So I'm going to be fairly brief and then Jens is going to talk about the ordinance. But the good news is there's still lots of bad news out there. Interest rates have remained low. Okay. So just to kind of refresh everybody's memory, we're here to talk about refinancing two pieces of old existing debt. And we're simply gonna take the old higher interest rates on that debt, replace them with today's new lower rates. All right. In the ordinance and at the last meeting, it was decided by council that we wanna move forward with this transaction as long as we can save at least 350,000 net of costs and net of subsidy, all right? Right now, we're still north of 400,000 if we were to do this in today's market, so that's good news. Um, we're planning to lock in interest rates on Thursday, assuming that we approve the ordinance this evening. So we're kind of almost there. Um, a few more days. Hopefully, we can come back, uh, you know, with a nice, nice savings number, well north of the minimum of 350. And I'm happy to answer any questions. That $400,000 figure is that net of expenses? Correct. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you. I'll turn it over here to Jens to go through the ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm going to be discussing Fairness uh, 2019-2. I believe you all have a copy now in front of you. Um, and we did summarize it at the, at the prior meeting where um, we summarized the ordinance and you authorized it to be advertised. And the advertising is a little different from normal borough code advertising. We're dealing with a law known as the Local Government Unit Debt Act, which governs uh, any type of borrowing by municipal entities that have taxing power, including, of course, boroughs. And what we're ca ca calling these bonds, they're known as general obligation bonds. And that's the same as the bonds we're looking to refinance, which are the Series B of 2010 and uh, of 2012, um, meaning basically you can pay for these bonds from any source of revenues chosen by council. In this case, the bonds are being paid from sewer revenues because the um, bonds did originally, when they were first issued, since they've been refinanced since, and one of them, one case, for sewer system improvements. So I believe this is primarily from the sewage treatment plant fund, wastewater treatment plant fund. So the payment of these bonds have been historically the borough as well as its municipal customers. And so likewise, the savings would be re result in reduction in payments by 
you know, the cut the borough and the minis other municipalities in proportion to what they've been contributing to the payments. <coughs> so that's good news to them as well as to the borough. Um, and the net result of this will be to reduce uh, payments. I forget how many years, what years again? The, the, so this, this, the other thing we talked about at the meeting was we decided to take the savings level over the life of the debt so rather than one up that's front. Right. So the recurring savings, depending on how much we get, that'll hit every year for the next 20 or so years. So basically it'll reduce everybody's payments by some amount every year, including what bills go out to the pension. So uh, you recall we, dis we discussed what level of savings were appropriate to undertake this trend to this refinancing, Re recognizing it, you know, you can't do, you can only do them when the bond, the prior bonds can be paid off, which typically you promise bondholders you won't be paying them off for about five years. So this opportunity arises, say, every five years or so. So in this case, um, you set a minimum target of 350,000 net, net of all costs. And based on the assumptions that are included in here of how much the federal government was paying on the one bond issue, um, you recall recovery zone bonds. That's the way that works. Rather than the lender not be able, you know, they pay tax on the interest, and therefore you pay a little higher interest rate, but the federal government sends you a check every six months to help pay for it. That was something that came about uh, during the recession years and is no longer in place. But even though um, you know we can't do that type again, rates have come down substantially so that you can refinance those savings. So the structure of this will be reflected as your old bonds general obligation bonds and the principal and interest payments will match up with the bonds being refinanced. We're not stretching out the debt in any way. Um, that's all shown in these numbers. And likewise, the, the security and covenants and other agreements in this ordinance are reflective of what you've already got. So you're not adding any responsibilities uh, to what you already have. Most of what's in this ordinance is dictated by that law, that statute I mentioned. A lot of mechanics of how the bonds work, a lot of promises. To, the main of, uh, one is to budget, appropriate, and pay the debt service as it comes to you. And then it's up to you to decide where the money is coming from, but again, in this case, it's sewer revenues. And as a result of that, we'll be able to file paperwork showing through your engineer that the revenues are sufficient to cover it and therefore is not a charge against what the borough could otherwise borrow for general fund purposes. And we'll be taking care of that. The number you saw here, and we discussed briefly, that 11,500 is a maximum number. Not only but maximum total number of bonds, but set up how many, how much principal could be due in any particular year. By putting a cushion in each of the years, it basically inflates the total number. But we're only at the most important number in here is at 350 pounds. Because nothing happens until you hit at least that number. And so there will be a lot of work to be done between now and the time that we can lock in those interest rates. But we've actually made a lot of progress on it since that last meeting. So I don't know when we're looking to go Th to market. Thursday, Thursday. Th Thursday. So, this Thursday, we'll be able to hopefully lock in those rates, and you'll know exactly what those savings are. And we'll you know, seek to get as much of that in as possible. And as um, Zach indicated, you're, you're at about 400000 now. It could be higher. We'll see. But keep your fingers crossed until Thursday. So that's all I have uh, on the ordinance. I'm happy to answer any questions. This is the only formal action required to be taken for the bond issue. And so we'll move with it from there, coordinating with the administration and system. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do have a question on the estimated composition of the uh, issue. 
looking at the uh, <coughs> uses of the ball on page 14. Yep. Right. I'm looking at the uh, line item legal fees. I'd like to go to break down of the legal fees estimated at 42,750. Well, that's, it's, um, there's two, that's, that's for my firm as bond counsel and also for your solicitor. Yeah. Um, what we'll be issuing is both have to issue legal opinions on the bonds. So in a sense, there's you no know, hourly work involved. And then there's you know, basically a cost to cover the risk and the insurance involved with that. So at roughly two thirds of that goes to my firm and about a third of it goes to solicitor. Okay. Any other questions? Do we need to take action on this? Yes. 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 Mark Severs? Yes. Bill Wilson? Yes. Dean Shea? Yes. <coughs> All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank 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 you. Got the floor, Josh. I'm, I'm here on behalf of the correctional facility. Uh, the staff at the correctional facility cannot get out to do their parking meters. And this is a big issue, also. But uh, the staff is watching you know, roughly average 150 inmates. Um, I have a few options that I think you would consider as far as maybe giving them eight-hour parking meters or give them the option to buy a quarterly pass on Wayne Street. If anybody knows anything about corrections, it's, you have to be there. It, it's a 24-7 operation. They have two 15-minute breaks. It's, it's, that's about all they get. They can't get out. They're getting $5 parking tickets. How many, how many employees do you have each day per shift? Without parking spots, 12. Per shift? Oh, night turns. Right, night turn can park in the yeah. parking lot, so that's not an issue. Spots at the library. Correct. But I can answer it. You go time. ahead and answer that, Josh. I didn't hear. Oh. I was asking her to be sure, but I mean, are, are your employees utilizing the parking available um, above the library? The clientele that we deal with, um, we've had numerous scratch dents, key to buy a new vehicle or even any vehicle and take up there and have damage like that. It's, it's very irritating. Issue day? What's that? Are you saying the vehicles are getting damaged up there? Damaged by the vandalism? Yeah, that's key. Yeah, they know what to drive. They know what they see. Yeah. So are you getting any complaints? I would have to look back to the reports. I don't recall a number of complaints. We get occasional complaints of vehicles being damaged. He's talking 
because they're employed at the jail. I, I understand that. That's why I'm asking Dave. Any other specific? I would know without research. Yeah. So we'll, we'll come back to the board. Give me a little background on this. I was on council when that jail was built, and we raised this very issue of parking. And the commissioners at that time says, oh, well, you can cite the jail where you cite it. We don't have to provide parking because there is a municipal lot within the required distance. And that was what the commissioners did on behalf of the jail. Susan McCartney and a couple others were on the board at that time. And that's how they addressed the issue. Well, that, that was, you know, 20 years ago. I'm asking now just to, they're not, they're not, there was 12 hour meters they removed them there wasn't an issue we could get the 12 hour meters pay the eight nine hours and we should be done we're not asking not i'm not asking not to pay or have them do something i'm just asking for maybe some eight hour meters to get them through the day or have them buy the the quarterly pass for points not asking nothing for free giving them some options besides the five dollar ticket they're getting there. well if we do it for the jail then every place that has a business in town can want their employees to have eight hour meters out front of still seven. first come first serve i'm not asking for the whole street to be eight hours I'm, you know somebody else takes them somebody else takes them there's still 12 hour meters there but the people get them there's two right now. One way. The purpose of the meters is to encourage turnovers so that businesses have customers. I've had pictures all last week of uh, there in front of the Elks. Two cars at the most have parked there all day. Between the hours of 7 a.m. and 4 a.m. I'm sure your meter people, I saw them collecting the money today, would see that nothing being collected there but if you made them the eight hour meters say then you, you'd get eight hours worth of parking good job on the lanes good they're beside the elves well it's certainly something the council can discuss as a whole i know that we have other things on the agenda this evening that concern parking so uh, I, I appreciate that. you taking the time and come in and offer some solutions and not just complain, Josh. No, I'm not complaining. I just want to give you. you a few options and take it into consideration, please, for public that safety way, officers, for public safety officers. Rather that way, you refer to a committee and have them take care. Thanks, Josh. Thank you. <coughs> okay. Uh, hearing of persons present. Is there any oh. you go right ahead, Jim. Jim Smith, I'm here uh, today representing Granville Township. Uh, also on the parking issue. Over <coughs> The last number of years I don't drive one of the vehicles with a municipal tag on but we do have many of our employees in town and uh, they've never been ticketed in the past I know there's been a quite a few uh, personnel changes and so on uh, it's been a kind of a unwritten agreement uh, reciprocal in nature because we have facilities at Randall Township which the borough occasionally uses and we have a charge for it. So uh, I just wanted to bring it up that uh, you know is this something that can be worked out or I mean you any vehicle that has a uh, municipal tag on do they get parking tickets as well? My guess would be that that hasn't been addressed with the, the meter enforcement officer and she would not have been aware of such agreement. <coughs> and she's an equal opportunist ticket 
<laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm not saying that issue can't be looked at, but I'm sure that, it, as Frank had suggested too, that that's an issue that we need to probably take the law and ordinance and discuss. Because the borough, on occasion, does use our impact so we've never charged for that. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. This is my first time. Okay, so can we have your name and address? So Shirley Briggs. Shirley Briggs. Briggs, okay. Six West Third. Thank you. And mine is about parking meters also. <laughs> See I, pattern. Yeah. I've lived in this town good many years, but I moved down here. But I'm two buildings down from here. Okay. I have to pay the parking meter. Mm -hmm. I've been down here for over 12 years, and I cranked a little, but not that much. Now, well, when I was working now, um, I've been on disability, and, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and the guy that did the tickets before, okay, we didn't have to pay after 4 o'clock, because, but really, I can't see why we even have all these parking parking space because there's no business up here. There's a dentist, there's a dentist. And over here's a church. What happens if they do something uh, like get a wedding in a Saturday? They all have to go around and put money in a mirror. But see, I feel that's wrong. I mean, that's my opinion. But uh, and that, like downtown, when I first, we moved down here in 71 and town was busy. I mean, you had Diana's shop, you had McCoy's, you had Mar the whole nine yard was down and out. Nothing. There's no nothing down in town but eating. There is some eating places. Um, so I, I just, but now I have to pay Saturday. That's what, I never paid Saturdays. Never. For 12 years. And it's like, wait a minute. All of a sudden now I've got to pay Saturdays also, which I think is wrong too. And I'm going to thank you. You go right ahead. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> the handicap spots. Um, my great granddaughters, their great grandparents, was they retired from Philadelphia as police officers, and she come. Now, before school was out, she'd come over because we had a split family thing. We'd get the kids half naked. And I was over here talking to her, and I said, here's some people that you have about putting money in a parking lot for handicap. They never did down in Philly. I mean, look at that. Big, I know, and we're just this little town. And it's like, what if you go like a dentist, you're putting, say, 1 o'clock, they're running late, blah, 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 whatever, and, you're, and I don't know what handicap. Because there's different kind of handicaps. You know, so you have to make sure you're down there and put more money in that meter. And and for being handicapped, I mean, I, I don't think they should have to pay. I mean, they're handicapped. And when you go to the courthouse, if you have a hearing or whatever, you go to court. It's at 9 o'clock. They tell you, be there at 9 o'clock. Well, you can sit there all day till 3 o'clock. And, but you don't know. If you're going to run outside, they may call your name. I don't think that's right. So, I'm not the only one who feels this way, but I'm the only one who has a mouth. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And so, I just, I know it's not going to change anything. It makes me feel better. But like I said, there's other people, and it was in the Sentinel, uh, I guess the opinion line saying about it. I mean, I could see like Saturdays, that's what, that, that really bothers me, Saturdays. Because there is nothing in town. Most of your dentists, the two dentists, they're not even open, but you, st you know, on Saturdays, but you still have to pay. Shirley, we do have it on our agenda to address some issues with Saturday enforcement, so. Okay. And before you say anything, three months you can get a $40 pass. I'm on a disability. 
I don't have that 40 bucks. Even I can't check, even break it down to get it. You know, from one check to the next check. So, okay, I want to thank you for listening to me. I thank you for coming in and voicing your concerns. See ya. Sorry, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sure, Jim. <laughs> Are you, are you going to talk about parking? No, you're no, more I, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I, I certainly could, and I have a lot to offer. I will defer to the Law and Ordinance Committee, Thank you. which I will be attending, as well as the Parking Authority. I'm okay. sure there will be ongoing discussion there. Um, actually, I'm here from the Success Together, which is a county initiative. Mm -hmm. And I think you received a letter back in <coughs> February, maybe. Mm -hmm. This is just a follow-up to that. I have two questions I want you to think about, and then we'll I mean, think about it, and then I'll ask for your response. Um, we are polling municipalities about, number one, what do you hear from your residents regarding their top issues or concerns? Sounds like part of maybe one. And then the other one, is what is the area in which you spend the majority of your resources funding, uh, combating, that type of thing? And we're trying to look at non-traffic related or non-construction um, related. So think about that and then we'll address that a little later. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Hey, Marlene. <coughs> Come on up. Up? Well, wherever. That's good. Right there if that's where you'd like to be. I don't care. That's good. Whatever you'd like. Um, it is about the parking that I would like to speak. I do own a business on Valley Street, on the first block of Valley Street. And uh, I've been in this business, I've been here for 49 years at that location. I've never had many complaints. But I definitely have a lot of complaints from my clients, people on my blog, businesses. You are driving people out of Lewistown. Mm -hmm. It's not good as it is. And I would like to be here. I have gotten many tickets, which was responsible for. I've gotten some that I was not responsible for. I got one up here in the parking lot where I parked where it was 12 hours. She gave me a ticket at four something. And I called Stacy, went downstairs to talk to Stacy. She uh, took care of it, but it was meter number three, 93. They claimed that that was not a 12 hour meter. That is a 12 hour meter. I come to work that day. I, from nine, I put 75 cents as I said to Stacy. I do not lie. I put 75 cents in there. Uh, and I got a ticket at 4 o'clock. Now figure it out. And there is no number on that meter when she said 93. I stopped before I came here and looked at it. Did you say 393 or 93? She said 93. I see no number on that. I don't know. I was parked in the last space before 3rd and the street. And it is 12 hours. They claimed it was not. It is, as I understand those first maybe eight or 12 hour meters. Okay. As I'm not sure about the exact amount. And I didn't even know that you could buy a pass in Lewistown after I've been here for 49 years, but I have done that. That is to park in the Bonton parking lot, so to speak. Yes. Is that correct? In the start meters, not just in the parking lot anywhere in general, but that, right? the upper mm -hmm. tier where the star meters are. Well, they're full all the time. I have been parking them, okay? And she said park in 3rd Street, that's two blocks. I do have a handicap sticker that is for my daughter who is also a handicap, and I have to park there. If I needed, I could have a handicap sticker because I have a problem that would, you know, but there's no sense to having two. My daughter cannot draw it, she is handicapped. I hear it from my clients constantly. I got a ticket, it was raining. I don't remember ever getting a ticket in the rain before.
that is very inhospitable. If you have people coming to Lewistown to shop in our town, how would you feel? I, I, I hear all kinds of reports in my business about this situation. I understand, I don't know who the young lady is, she is currently <coughs> on the stick about her job, so to speak. Maybe a little too aggressive. That's, that is not very friendly to a business person either. I've been paying taxes on there for 49 years. We have some rights, I would think. I don't feel that way. I have other business people. I can get, I thought of coming with the people, businesses name, forming a petition. If you want that, I will do it. I don't want to waste my time. My time is valuable too. The girl, one day, the other thing is, all the handicapped parking is on, it's one way street, is on the right hand side. I have a client that is handicapped from arthritis, hands and feet, but has a driver's license. She has to get out into the traffic to come across the street to my salon. There are no handicapped parking on my side of the street. Now, I got an application from Stacy. She was very nice. She gave it to me thinking I was the one for the handicapped. It is not. I want it for my clients, for the business people coming in the salon or anybody getting has to get out on the other side of the street. You have to handicap person getting out from the driver's side if they can stop drive, it's not very safe. And as I said to the young lady, the meter person, <coughs> my one client, the same one, I went out and put money in my meter and her meter because she's handicapped at the same time. She's giving her a ticket, I have a lot of time on my meter. And we all know those meters don't work. I have clients taking pictures of them, steamed up. That they're steamed up, they can't see, they're willing to come up and testify. That same meter, the week before a client got a ticket on it, it wasn't working. That she's now giving to the handicapped, this is the meter person. That client was there at the same time leaving, and said so morning she's giving the lady's name is Judy, a ticket, and that's when I went out. And I said to her, this same was happened last week with this. I know this is wrong because I put, if you go up and look at my meter, it still has time on it. They're two hour meters. Services in my business are not just two hours either. Uh, I said to the meter maid, you can't see these. She's short. She said, she looks at it and says, I can see it. I said, you have glasses. Not everybody is down that low and can see that well. When you look in there, try it yourself if you're tall or she's short, she can see. She's also, I don't know how, I would estimate 50 years old. Many of the people on those streets in Lewistown no longer are 50 years old. Think about it. I said, what about the girl, the people who come out that are elderly in the rain to get tickets and they fall? The borough gets sued. Am I not correct? I don't know. I'm not a legal person, but that's a quick question. But anyhow, why should they have to fall to go out in the rain? We understand there's a lot of concerns and we, we are working on addressing them. I can give you a whole list. I hear it constant. So if you we. want them, so do we. If so you want we. it written, I'll be happy to get them to you. Um, I, I have a question. If sure. I and, and I hear, I hear feedback um, talking to business owners that agree with you, and then I hear feedback of, you know, from business owners that agree with the meters because they they, they need the tournament. But I guess my question is, and, and, and to everybody. I mean, frankly, the borough, even to pay a parking ticket in the borough, is probably the cheapest place to park in the country, you know, anywhere that has meters. But my question is, what has changed? And, and I'm not saying I agree or disagree with anything you're saying. I'm telling you what's changed. Back. It's the what's aggression different? of the meter bag. I have no problem with paying my ticket. It's her aggression. It's her attitude. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know the girl. I have nothing against people in general, but we do have some rights, I hope. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. More than. That's, more than that's my. I don't mind paying a ticket or knowing that things are offered to businesses in those towns. Told you, I've been here for 49 years in that same business. It will be 50 next March. And you've never had complaints from No, it's not like this. Like Just a general, yes. 50 years is a long time. Yes, you bet. Well, thank you for your commitment to downtown. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, let's move on with the, the consent agenda. Make a motion, please, sir. Just so you know, under the Friends of the Embassy, we did get payment for that today. So I just wanted to let you guys know. Why don't you have to go and take another the agenda to discuss on the regular agenda? With uh, A1 uh, Council Meeting Minutes. C1 schedule bills. Approve the, the balance of the consent agenda, okay. and then A1 and C1 yep. need to be taken up individually. Very good. So we have a motion to approve the remaining items on the consent agenda. So moved. Have a second to approve the remaining balance of the consent agenda or no? Thank you, Mark. Discussion? Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Roll call. Frank Barrier? Yes. Dave Campbell? No. Larry Sear? No. Mark Sievers? No. Bill Wilson? No. Venus Shade? Yes. Okay. So I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as was written in the meeting agenda. Second the motion. You can't do that. Just for, uh, you yeah, can't I mean, do that. it's, since the consent agenda started, it's always been the right of any council person to remove items I mean it was never done with a motion before uh, you know the whole idea behind the consent agenda is we used to go through these things individually and the meetings last much much longer well, do, do we discuss them now or and then and then okay all the whole agenda or how do you know, the point is is to take out certain items right. for the separate discussion right and then streamline the process 
and approve the rest of the agenda. Otherwise, you'll have to go down through each and every line item and make a motion and discuss this. Well, then why did, why did we have the vote? The, the vote, the vote, the, the the vote was to approve the balance of the consent yeah, agenda right. minus two the items. two items that I wanted pulled out. You know, all, all of that, right, all that motion is, it's just like we do every month, approving the consent agenda, with the exception of two items that can, will have to be just addressed individually later on. But it wasn't approved, so now what we get Now we can go through each one account. individually. Make a motion to then approve the entire thing since that original motion. Correct. Yeah. Right. Well, you could make that motion. However, or right, right. I mean, it said like it says right on there. Items will be acted on one motion unless any member of council desires to move an item to the regular agenda for further discussion. Yeah, that's pretty clear cut. Right. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, we do this all the time. It's well, the, the, it's usually it's usually questioned and, and answered, and, and then we go through with the consent agenda. I mean, I see what you're saying. It, is what and I'm normally saying. we just discuss it and right. then go through the agenda. Yeah, I mean, so, like if someone has a question about something, you know, yeah, some, a, some, a letter or something. It's essentially the same thing. Just, We're just going yeah, so, to so the why can't first. we just get through the two things he wants right now? And if everybody else is satisfied, then we, then we just go back to the consent agenda. I guess you could, someone, if they were inclined, could make, say, a motion to approve item A1. That motion to approve item C1, discuss them at that time. I mean, I think it's that would probably get it done. You see what he's saying? Uh, I know he mentioned specific parts and motions to approve those specific sections. Well, all he's saying is we can make the motion to take those two sections out and talk about them and then go back and make another motion and approve the remaining items on the consent agenda. I mean, these things need action. Correct. I mean, the minutes need approved, the bills need paid. It's all a matter of how you want to do it. It's just one Okay. So it seems like the easiest way to do that would be to approve the consent agenda minus those two items and then discuss those two items. That's what we attempted to do. It was Correct. Down. Well, I can no longer make a motion. I, I, I mean, I guess you, you, a member could make a motion, like I said, to approve the council meeting minutes of May 13th, 2019. And then we, someone can second it and we can discuss. <coughs> no, and then yeah, we'll make a motion to approve C1. Right. And then we'll discuss that, and then we'll make a motion to approve the remainder of the consent You're agenda. saying once these two are okay, the question would take take Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. and then we'll approve just, the rest. Okay. 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 Yeah. Approve the rest of the consent agenda. So, we have a motion for A1. Now I'll make a motion for the consent Okay, thank you. I'll second Okay, so now we can have discussion on last month's meeting minutes. I was not at the last month's meeting. I take a business trip to Massachusetts <coughs> in May every year. And it's on the last <coughs> month's point of our council meeting. 
usually whenever I miss a meeting, I check in with the borough manager to find out what I missed. However, that is not an option. The next option is to uh, talk to various members of uh, council. I call Mr. Family. He has my number blocked. I call Mr. Wilson. He will not pick up my call or call back. I talked to Mrs. Shea, and my question to her was, why was the borough manager terminated? And she could give me no good answer. I watched it on television. I looked at the minutes. The minutes say when asked for a reason by the public, Mr. Campbell announced it was for several personnel issues that have been compiled. I would like to know what those personnel issues are and why it resulted in the termination of the manager. And I direct my question to Mr. Campbell because he made the motion. Uh, is there specific things that you want to discuss? They need to be discussed in executive session. No, they do not need to be discussed in executive session. Myself, I deserve an explanation. The members of the community deserve an explanation. I've been asked. There, we don't. You don't need a reason, Frank. You don't. Are you telling me you had no reason? He's an at-will employee. He can be. He can are be, you he can be replaced for any, any, anything? I understand that. Are you telling me you had no reason? Is that what you're saying? That's not what you said. No, that's not case. what I said. Okay. Then what is the reason? My reason is a personal reason to me. Personal and, and it's, it's none of your business. In other words, it's none of the business of the taxpayers of the world to understand what your reason is. It's not See, right there. Wait a right minute. I'm asking Mr. Sear. I'm asking Mr. Sear a question. He can be terminated for anything, Frank. What is the reason, Mr. Sear? Sure. What do you have to hide? Because four people wanted to hide. What, 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 what do you have to hide? What do you have to hide? Give me a concrete reason why you dismissed the borough manager. Mr. President, I, I call for the order of the day. No, I, I, de I deserve an answer. I'm a member of this We don't need to answer it. It, it. I mean, the action took place, Frank. You weren't here to speak your piece. I'm sorry about that. You know, but, you know, that's, that's it. Again, I deserve an explanation. I'm a member of this board and a taxpayer of the borough of Lewistown. Madam President, I call for the orders of the day, which is a privileged notion. The order of the day is the vote on the table where we approve the council meeting minutes for May 13th. I'm not going to let this draw. I'm not going to let this draw. Mr. Campbell, tell me specifically. We're not going to sit here all evening no, no. and rehash this. Excuse me? We're not going to sit here all evening and discuss just this point. Well, We've got many an things to go Somebody through. Somebody give me an answer. Somebody give me an answer. Right. You're trying to lure a council member into breaching the confidentiality terms. No, I'm not either. Of executive session. No, I, I am not. I, I'm not doing that. I deserve an answer as to why the manager was terminated. There were multiple personnel issues. Okay. Piled. Really? Yes. Let me explain something to you. The manager cannot hire. We do that. The manager cannot fire or dismiss. We do that. How many grievances have the union filed against the manager in the last three years? Do you have any idea? None. No. Now, if there was a personnel issue, why were there no grievances on it? I'm asking, what's the problem here? When was this decision made to dismiss, dismiss the manager? At the last meeting. Don't lie to me. Why were the locks orders changed on yes. Sunday? I have made. Why were the locks orders changed on Sunday? Frank, I think you pull up. No, I talked to the locks. 
He was called by Mr. Campbell on Sunday to change the law to 6 o'clock Monday evening while council was in session. The decision was made outside of council. He was not called on Sunday. I'm going to approve Mr. Campbell's motion and call the question to a vote. Uh, we need approval for the minutes from May 13th. Roll call. Yes, roll call. Frank Barrier. I wasn't at the meeting, so I cannot approve the minutes. No. Dave Campbell. Yes. Larry Sears. Yes. Mark Sievers. Yes. Bill Wilson. Yes. Vina Shade. Yes. <laughs> Again, I asked for an answer. Okay. okay. Why was the manager uh, dismissed? We're going to move on to. She won't get that. Thing. Need a motion to uh, make a motion. Me approve the bill. I'll approve she won. So we move for a second. I'll second. Thank you. Discussion. I have a question on the bill from the law school. Mr. Campo called him ahead of the meeting and told him to change the locks. That was not approved by council. Council, men cannot, council members cannot incur expenses on behalf of the borough outside of the system. There's a bill for $195 and I suggest you pay it. You're the one that called the locksmith outside of council to do this. It was handled the exact same way as you handled it when you terminated Mr. White. Did you pay that bill? No, you you don't know how we handled it. I know exactly how it was handled because I did my homework long before. Mr. Remy, what's the protocol here? Can he can he incur expense on behalf of the borough? No single council person can take really any action outside of a public meeting. And that's exactly what happened here. No, I mean, I, I think council could if it so choose approved payment of the bill. Uh, on the for a staff can approve payment of the bill that is under what is that amount? Uh, thousand dollars. Well I think it's really, really bad practice to enable members of council to commit this firm to spending money without any approval whatsoever. This barrier we led by your Okay, we're going to call this motion to a vote as well. C1. Roll call, please. Frank Barrier. No. Dave Campbell. Yes. Larry Sears. Yes. Mark Sievers. Yes. Bill Wilson. Yes. Nina Shade. Yes. Okay. okay. I make a motion to accept the rest of the consent. Sorry, second. I second. Discussion on the remainder of the consent agenda. Okay, motions to need cover a second. Um, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, let's move on to our regular uh, agenda. First we'll have the treasurer's report. Um, okay, so um, the bond rating, we did get an A rating, I was happy to report, and it is, the summary of that information is within the packet that they passed out, the yellow packet. So if anybody wants to take a look at that, so that was a positive. And then also, um, I wanted to let you guys know that I completed the wastewater treatment plant final uh, report. Um, I have copies here for anybody who wants and uh, they were given to their respective municipalities, Granville and Gary. So, I want to add uh, with our credit rating, very few communities per staff of credit rating in the So, we should be more proud of I understand we have a lot of positive comments regarding our budget. And yeah, it says that all in the Real packets, so. yeah, I mean, the way that works is we were on about what a two hour phone call with Standard and Poor and about a dozen other people, and they have a lot of questions about really every aspect of how the borough works before they're willing to give a rating. And they gave an A stable rating, which is, is really good. Good job, guys. More staff? Yes. Everybody involved.
then it is that everything, Diana? Yes. I'm gonna speak in behalf of the codes. Yes, I know Stan said Rex is not he's on vacation. Yeah. Right? So um, there were a total of fifty zoning permits issued this year versus uh, thirty-six zoning permits last year. 51 sidewalk permits this year versus 36 of last year. Uh, the permit fees year to date for the zoning of 2019 represent 16610.07 and zoning of 2018, which was last year, so 54567.57. The sidewalk of this year is 3980 year to date and the sidewalk of 18 is 2275 uh, year to date. Mr. Fink gave me the report before he left. I think it was also new. Yes, Next, we have Fire Chief. I'm not going to skip you this week, this one. All right, thank you. Okay, for the month of May, the fire department <coughs> ran 24 alarms. On uh, a quick breakdown, two building fires, one brush or grass fire, one dumpster fire. Assisting EMS eight alarms, motor vehicle accidents with injuries three, motor vehicle pedestrian accident one, hazardous condition one, carbon monoxide incident one, power lines down two, detector activation no fire, two, alarm system activation which is automatic alarms like in high devices, two of them. Also there's 36 hours of training offered the fire department personnel this past month mm -hmm. and later on this month we'll be coordinating with chief clemens uh, we'll have a fire engine and fire police down in that part of the fireworks so we work with the chief of police in that okay great thanks bob mayor uh, the only thing that i have uh, is this ongoing thing with dr parsons trust and uh, last week on the 5th, uh, we had our first meeting. Uh, and attendance was, uh, besides Mark Crammy, uh, Don Shawley, and also Paul Trego, who are trust uh, uh, supervisors down at uh, JD today. There's a lot more to this than what you would think. And uh, it is going to be um, probably an ongoing thing for a little bit here to we can get our ducks in a row. Uh, I did want to bring before, and I mentioned it at last month's meeting about the, the group I got together, to, but um, you all have to approve this, this board. So just as a reminder, it's Kay Hamilton, who's the former CEO of uh, Winston Hospital. Uh, Jason Cunningham is a branch manager at Fish Bank. Uh, Dr. Charles Everhart, who's been a physician here in town for a lot of years. And Susan Hunter from the Granville Township Planning Commission. And myself. So I'd like um, your approval to move on. We have another meeting scheduled. I think it's the 26th. So um, make a motion we approve the committee. Yes, 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 I'm asking. Yes. I'll second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we'll continue working on it on periodic and maybe as important. Thanks. Chief Clemens? The statistics for May, we had uh, 568 calls for service. Uh, we issued 66 traffic citations, 13 non-traffic citations, 12 warnings, <coughs> uh, 897 parking tickets were issued and 199 street sweeper maintenance tickets, parking tickets for uh, As far as uh, things that are going on within the department, uh, the new police vehicle, we had an update on that. It's supposed to be manufactured starting on June 26th, so we should have it shortly thereafter, possibly in July. Um, laptop computers for the vehicles are supposed to be installed this week, and I just had an update on a radio project uh, which we're coordinating with the county. Uh, it's supposed to be finalized this month, and we did get uh, an award, a grant award. We don't know the amount yet. That'll be announced in early July through PCCD to uh, help finance the radio project. So, those are th some things that are going on. Um, 
Chief Parlett said we'll be coordinating with them for the fireworks on June 29th to um, take care of the back part of the area. That's all I have. Thank you. I have a question for the Chief. Sure. I think you are aware that we had a rural employee to falsify the drug test and subsequently quit his job. My question is, is the Lewistown Police Department investigating this and will charges be filed for falsifying a drug test? Um, there's never any formal complaint made to the police department for an investigation, so it's not being investigated right now. Why, why would you need a formal complaint? You need, need somebody to report if you are aware of it. What do you mean if I'm aware of it? The only information I had of it was the discussion that went on in the last meeting. That was it. So who files the form of the complaint? Anyone? That would be somebody within the borough and they would be in charge of that. We don't take it upon ourselves to just start investigating things. Well, I don't know. I don't know what the procedure is. Yeah. At least, you know, I'm aware of a lot of things that happen, but we don't just take it upon ourselves to investigate unless somebody reports something to us. Seems kind of long. Uh, in that type of situation, that's not like an on view thing where we go out and observe a traffic violation or a DUI or something like that. We do self initiate those kind of investigations, but. Something like this, there has to be a report made to the police department and requesting an investigation. So that was not done. Okay, that answers the question. Thank you. Ms. Hendricks. Okay, uh, the very first thing that needs approval is Emma McClure's wedding reception on October 26th with alcohol. <coughs> Uh, she does have her ranch certified bartender, her liability, and her alcohol papers. Everything has been filled out and sent on. So I need approval for alcohol for her wedding down at the community center on October 26th. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead with okay. the rest of the Okay. The next one is approval of Matt Kreider and Caitlin Lieber's wedding reception. And that is on August the 10th, the 19th, with alcohol. And once again, he has filed all his papers. Uh, the third thing is the approval of the Rec Park pool fee, a dollar per child for Children of the Ark. Uh, basically the same thing that we've already done for the Luna Center and Hide and Seek. And then the last one is approval for a back-to-school party for July 23rd of uh, this year with fees possibly being reduced. Uh, she was at our uh, recreation board meeting with Children's and Youth, and we went over prices, but they wanted to see if possibly maybe there'd be some way of getting reduced prices for the rental of the pool for that. And that's okay. basically yeah. it. Okay. Thanks, Laura. So, uh, We don't do Last that. Year? No. 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 Okay, so approval of Emma McClure wedding. Need a motion? So moved. Also moved. Made and second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Okay. Approval of the Crider Weaver wedding for August 10th. So moved. Motion's been made and properly seconded. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Approval of Rec Park full fee, full fee of a dollar for children of the art. Made second. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 
and then um, approval of the back to school party for 72319 with possibly reducing fees. Um, that's really not something we've done in the past. Yeah, I thought they were going to be here tonight or yeah. she thought she was going to be here to speak of it. And so it's a little bit. Make hard. a motion we approve it at regular approach. Okay. Second. Motion's been made to approve at regular price and seconded discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Opposed? Up to you, Mr. Remy. I have a question as we go over here. How, how did the uh, how did the pool opening go? Uh, as far as Memorial Day weekend, the first three days. Yes. I would have to get you actual figures on dollars. Um, pretty sure it was a little over three. It was a little over three, or a little less than three. You know, I was more concerned with the operational. Those things are still being addressed. There's, uh, you mean as far as checks and balances? No, I mean from the standpoint of, like, is the pool operating properly, that type of thing? Did you have staff? Yeah, there was no problems with that. I mean, there's issues with some of the checks and balances, but that has to be addressed were, were with you, rec park pool there manager. There open then? No, I was not actually down there present the day it opened. Was there anybody from staff down there when it opened? Just the actual pool. Just the rec park pool manager and the, and the people that are employed to work down there. Okay, thank you. Okay. We have uh, up for consideration an ordinance to enter into an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the Mifflin County School District for the 2019-2020 school year and any extensions uh, under which the borough will provide a police officer uh, to the district school resource officer program. Uh, the agreement will be essentially that the district will, pay, will pay uh, the borough at the hourly, hourly rate of pay based on current uh, salary and benefits for four hours a day approximately uh, when classes are in session. meeting I had circulated a uh, kind of a revised version of an ordinance having to do with fees for motor vehicle accidents um, you know I indicated that I had some questions about that since that time I, I was able to get a hold of and actually the mayor sent it to me was a another sample ordinance from an organization called the Pennsylvania Fire and Emergency Services Institute, um, you know, their sample ordinance, they do have these charges just billed to uh, insurance companies as uh, they call it an added on cost of the claim for damages of the vehicle. Uh, I have a telephone call or an email in to PFESI to see if anyone has enacted an ordinance based on their model so um, I can I can circulate that but what I'm really asking for I guess is to send it back to to law and ordinance to look at the other model ordinance and and to determine which direction the, the borough wants to go. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a motion to approve the 
there any other yeah. municipalities that have an ordinance at all in regard to this? Yeah, yeah the, the one that I had brought was essentially the same one that Brown Township has enacted. Okay, well, you had some concerns with that. Right. right. One well, I got one. Right. And, PSAB. Yeah, and the mayor, the mayor's was from PSAB yeah. through this other organization. So there are, yeah. there are. Now under Brown's, Brown just says it is the responsibility of the individual to um, to pay for these certain services. Uh, the way Brown does it is their fire company contracts with a, a service who um, attempts to collect these fees by billing insurance companies. So even though their ordinance says uh, basically everyone's responsible, I think their practice is to only bill insurers for them. That's what I've been so, um, There's a still there are a couple options out there. I just want to make sure we do what's best for for the borough itself. Can you bring that back to all okay. ordinance. Okay. Uh, Diana? Um, so we have budgeted uh, for three summer interns for 2019 at 8 an hour for the streets, uh, to help out with the streets. Uh, I'm looking for council's approval to hire those three interns to offset the workload. Three interns? For streets. That's for the police. This is for the streets. Discussion? Okay, all those in favor of hiring three interns? Say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. And then we received from a Gary Baker from HRI contacted me in regards to an agreement for South Main and Elizabeth Street. Um, they need this agreement signed in order to continue to perform the highway construction on the bridge. Um, it just, what it does, it allows them to utilize and occupy the property since we own it. Um, and so I need to get council's approval to uh, ha execute that agreement. Okay. Well, so is this that here? Agreement, yeah, that's was it. Was that agreement not non-existent from the very beginning or was that some part of it or what was that? It's actually, uh, to be able to use here, I have it here. I can yeah, exactly. it. Oh, you can have it given to him? But what he's asking is, was this not in place on this date? Well, from my understanding, it was discussed with the prior borough manager. Oh, so okay, so it just wasn't approved by council yet. Yeah. Diane had asked me about it, and I advised her to get it approved by borough council. Got it for him, Dave? Yes. Oh, thank you. So they already started this work already on that garbage? Uh -huh. uh -huh. Nice. motion to approve the agreement. I did. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. That was discussion. I'm sorry, Harry. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, Opposed? No. Um, I also have a highway occupancy permit needed to, ex to be executed so the engineers can finish the design for the Valley Street project. Now this is uh, currently uh, the borough can't inspect the sewer lines because there's too much distance between the manholes on Valley Street. Um, we need to get the manholes installed, more manholes installed so that they can go and inspect the sewer lines and find out what their condition is um, prior to when PennDOT pays, which is anticipated to be in 2022, I believe. Um, so I would need council's approval to 
uh, ha have staff execute the agreement for the highway occupancy permit. Discussion? This is something that hasn't been started yet, correct? correct? That is something that has not been started yet. Okay. All those in favor of the highway occupancy permit for Valley Street, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Very good. Um, we received a letter uh, from the commissioners um, in regards to the maintenance for 3rd Street and Juniata Street Cemetery. So the county had maintained the cemetery for years, and now the county in the letter is stating since the borough owned it that we should be the ones maintaining it. Um, they're going to discontinue maintaining it effective June the 30th, 2019. Um, I don't know if there was an agreement done prior um, but I, I did uh, talk to uh, Dave Fry, the prior 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 borough manager, um, and it would have been done in the late 80s or uh, early 90s. And so far, I haven't been able to find anything. And it doesn't um, look like they were able to find right, anything either. Right. So I can see if possibly the Mesa County Probation Office would like to take over maintaining it. However, I need to contact the union because we are union um, to see if they would allow us to go to them in regards to it, if not, the streets would be, be required to maintain them. Across from sheets. Right. Oh, relax. Yeah. So, I was always under the impression that that was a cemetery from Bethel Way. I mean, yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the main every cemetery. Well, they uh, gave we, us the, the right. They gave the tax yeah. card. I mean, tax cards for exempt properties are notoriously inaccurate because since they're not paying taxes no one really cares what's on them um, I I don't know if the borough does or doesn't and that tax card doesn't convince me that the borough does necessarily um, there should be there is if the borough owns it I would think indeed it's somewhere yeah there, there was a search done was it more than a couple of years ago I believe oh, Scott had had um, a, another law firm look into that but I never heard the results of it I can't remember, but it was done. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I know that he had, he had talked to another law firm, but I never heard the results of it. Oh, I, I want to check through the minutes and see where that was formed out. And if it is their cemetery, I, mean, I would think it would be a worthwhile conversation to have sure. with them. Right. Take care. Right. Right. Hey, I have a question about that. I've been in that cemetery. In fact, I used to live right up the street from there. I've been in that cemetery in the last, I want to say, four years. Okay? There are people buried in there from back in the Revolutionary War. Correct. We need okay. to take care of it. Does the Historical Society have anything to do with that? No? Well, I think they do recognize the, the historical value that it has for our community. Yeah. Uh, but as far as maintenance, uh, the, the county has, in my recollection, has always taken care of it, just as they do the one down on Water Street. Water Street. So, yes. while there might be historical significance, they don't have the manpower All right. to do that. But, um, I mean, regardless, we have to make sure that it's mowed, and then we can figure out who owns it and go from there as far as having a discussion and I think that's what you were going to allude to Dave right that we have a discussion with Bethel AME about and I guess I probably wouldn't have to call them up and see what information they had it's very doesn't hurt to ask um, the last item I wanted to let all the council know that we've started to lock the side door in order to help out with the security of the staff and knowing who's coming in the building so the side door can be used as an exit only now that's all I have. Thank you. Um, and now we are on to unfinished and new business. Yep, we need approval to release CBDG Yes, we have uh, got this from the county. Um, the amount for the one uh, is. Release is 
$4,557.05, and that's the 2016 funds for the administration for the first quarter 2019 salary reimbursement. And uh, the other one is uh, in the amount of $199.93 for the first quarter 2019 material and supplies reimbursement, um, and that is 16 funds alone. The other one was 16 and 17. <coughs> I need councils of action for approval on that so we can release that to them. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next we have uh, finance. Committee. Mr. Okay, um, I'm looking for approval to bid out uh, property of 672 and 674 Valley Street, requiring a $5,000 reserve on the bid. Details approval for that. The property was crazy. Did we have a $4,000 bid on that? What, what was the, the appraisal amount? I did write it. 5000 
Well, her last day will be Friday, but it's still a matter of replacing her with someone else. So for future, do yeah, make well, we the schedule. Have two interns, make right? the schedule on Monday for the Friday schedule as opposed to. Saturdays and change the schedule of the parking enforcement officer as a personnel. Wouldn't that be true well, to look over the whole parking meter situation? We agree on that, Frank. And we I think mean, that well, rather than attack it piecemeal at this time, well, look, I, I look think at the that whole thing and revamp the ordinance, put your meters where they do the most good for the most amount of time. We're having this discussion. Right, and we agreed with that, and we think that the best way to do that would be to approach the parking authority and ask them to get a consultant to come in to tell us exactly what we need to do here in our community to better that. Uh, but in the meantime, Saturday enforcement is a real hassle for the people downtown. Saturday enforcement is self-serving for you, and you made that clear at the last meeting. It's not just for me, Frank. It's for a lot of other people well, in the borough. But the, 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 the I thank you for adding me into that. Well, the, the how, how, can you, how can yeah. you have a borough ordinance yes. and, and say that you're only going to enforce it certain days? Well, the ordinance I mean, says Monday through Saturday. You can have the ordinance. Yeah. That's I mean, why, that's why you need a comprehensive, comprehensive discussion in law and ordinance rather than attack it peacefully. As simple as that. This whole problem is brought about by not having any enforcement for the last five years. Correct. Simple right. as that. I mean, if we'd have had enforcement and consistent enforcement, we wouldn't be hearing these problems now. Right. But people are used to what they're used to, and now we have somebody enforcing it and it takes them out of their pattern. <coughs> but again, it's something that need, needs, you, you might have a good idea there having the parking authority pay for a study. But, but to, to attack it piecemeal, it just doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. You better think about replacing some of the meter to very little. Well, again, do you want to spend money on that until we would get something back from a consultant and, and really tell us well, what, then, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you're right, then you're going to need to do the discussion if you're going to have a... We're going to ask. We're going to have Well, okay. You're right, it is about I mean, just already in the force in the committee. Mm -hmm. That's the way you see what the their verdict did rather than arguing about the lodge and that shit now. But even when we had meter enforcement prior, we didn't have it on Saturdays. Just to take into consideration all the churches that are there now. Activities are going on on Saturday. I know our our church members got hammered a couple of times on a Saturday because Every of the church and their church hammered a couple of times. Yeah, they got hammered. That was Grace United Methodist. Yeah, they got hammered. Sacred Heart, Sacred Heart did too. That's right. Yeah. I think we owed it to the people who come to the borough on Saturdays to at least offer that consolation. Why not the people who come to the borough anyway? Well, I agree with you there, <laughs> but the you know, hey. Take the meter down. Well, I would love to. Is that a motion? <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> okay. We didn't really need. If it's, in, if it's already in a committee, then I think we may as well just the actual not be arguing about it now until the, the committee conducted what they want to do. We've kind of been into it all more than it's in. For months. For months. The EDU discussion for Michelle Fetter's property, this was. Again, while well, we're going to discuss this, that what happened there on that date was like two months ago, and it was not on that last agenda. And it came to, she had called up and we questioned it, and I checked out the minutes 
from the long run is from the prior meeting. It just and it had not gotten on the schedule, so that's why I'm bringing it back to council. My, my recollection is uh, this individual came, she she has one building that houses her business and her residence, and she wanted to know, I guess, how it should be treated in terms of one or two EDUs, and we looked at uh, the intermunicipal agreement with Granville and Derry, um, and there, there are kind of maybe two, two issues in the agreement, both of which I think point to it being a, a single EDU. Um, the one I, I thought was most applicable would be that um, a mixed occupancy building can be a single EDU. That's uh, defined in the agreement as buildings which have one or more residential dwelling units but whose lower stories or part thereof are used for commercial purposes. I think that's exactly what's going on based on what this lady reported to the Law and Ordinance Committee. Uh, there was also a, a, another paragraph C uh, that had to do with a mixed occupancy dwell, uh, dwelling um, and that was also going to be a, a single commercial EDU. So, But that's in the intermunicipal agreement. Yes. The borough ordinance for sewage treats it as two units. The residential portion is one unit and the business portion is a second unit with a second charge. Otherwise you could have a situation where Kish Apartments would have a business on the first floor and the whole building would be one unit. And under the intermunicipal agreement, that can be done. However, under the borough ordinance, you cannot do it that way. It looks like I'm looking at section 192.16 of our sewer and sewage disposal ordinance, which says uh, the borough determines uh, that an EDU, an equivalent dwelling unit, shall be as that term is defined in the 1982 agreement. Uh, between Grand Village area, et cetera. I think that's why we went back to the agreement. Is right. that references that? That's an EDU. Right. But an EDU in that case is 60,000 gallons a year. The, 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 the EDU is, is $60,000 60, a year usage. Now that's your Commonwealth defined EDU. But that's not what the intermunicipal agreement says. They count units. They don't count EDUs. Yeah. Honestly, I haven't thought about this since it's back true. on March 28th. Yeah. But well, I mean what I read you was from our municipal agree intermunicipal agreement. Mixed occupancy buildings, those which have one or more residential dwelling units but whose lower stories or parts thereof are used for a commercial purpose is to be, can be counted as one EDU. So. Well, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to revamp all your sewer rates for mixed occupancy buildings. I got one right next door. I pay for two units. Mm -hmm. Residential up and, and commercial down. I pay two units right next door. I, I thought that her, she was seeking it to be combined to just one bill as her residence could she put us there? We, we do send her just one bill with the two users on it. She's charged for two users, but it is under one bill. And she's, so she's served for commercial, not residential, correct? That was Scott Wellen's recommendation. It would be one commercial EDU. No, I bet currently, though, what she charged for. I don't yes, know. Yes, it's commercial. This is from the water company. This is their meeting, like, and she's charged at, as commercial with the two users. Rex was to get some information 
and he got some information. He let Evolution Arts Center is charged as a commercial with one extra user for refuse and sewer. At 121 Valley, Las Carices, 6 West Market Street, the same concept, commercial, extra user refuse, extra sewer. Amanda Muller Insurance, 28 East 3rd, both extra commercial. The nail salon at 8 West. Those all, all these buildings are multiple users. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, see, she's going to get rid of that. Yeah. Well, and I think some of the problem might be that whenever she purchased the building, she was told by the previous owner that he only ever paid one. Well, that's not our issue. I, I understand that. So, yeah. I think it's been. Yeah. You know, if you would give her one unit there, you throw our whole system have to do on it for too. everybody. That's not how we do it. I mean, Correct. I got into this with Derry Township years ago. and they enlightened me uh, as to how this rumors works. And uh, that's how it works. All right. Yeah. Can you put this? That's what I was going to say. Um, that was under the um, consent yeah, agenda. Yeah. Um, because what happened yeah, is. is we got it today. Yeah. And uh, so I had to put it on the uh, amended agenda and put that under the consent agenda. So I was just giving you for your information so you can see what they were wanting to do with that property. Okay. With the facilities. Public comments. Sure, Jim. Sure. <laughs> do we have the answers to those questions? Oh, no. No. <laughs> no. Would you like to uh, put them in writing to me? And that would be a wonderful them? way to go. We'll advise the borough secretary and, and uh, Yeah, I have already on my notes to get a hold of you. Too. All right, very good. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, do we need executive session? I think we do, correct. So we will break for executive session.